So the first trend is standing for something. So Emma, do you think with so many brands coming to market and consumers now having more choice than ever before, do you think that brands need something to differentiate themselves? So for example, um, Starbucks having their My Starbucks idea offering more than just a product or a service. I think they definitely need to stand for something different and they really need to kind of put their head above the parapet and almost have their own brand story in a way. Mm -hmm. So one really good example I love is Clark Shoes. So they're a real heritage brand. Um, they were been around for years, but, you know, they were kind of seen as a bit fuddy-duddy. So they kind of actually really focused on the heritage side, but made it trendy and actually kind of went back to the archives, bringing back products and then... They did some really clever things with content marketing where you could see timelines of, okay. of shoe trends and things like that. And cool. you can obviously translate that into PR as well. So Definitely. that's a really good thing. And then Hallmark, which is a brand I work with through my work at Finn PR, um, mm -hmm. Hallmark Cards, they are really keen to focus on education this year. So okay. the kind of relationship between card writing and reading and then helping kids like with literacy skills so rather than just being like, we want to sell cards, they actually make them relevant to everyday people. And um, it's almost like a bit of a CSR okay. activity because um, it's sort of, you know, showing that they care about the community rather than just, like I say, selling cards. Definitely. So more and more brands, you think, are going to start to do Definitely. That. Yes, okay. I do. Good. And question two is... Influencer marketing. So, do you think this is important for brands in 2017? Because obviously, there's been a decline in the trust for advertising and traditional media as well. Yeah, well, I think this is going to be massively important for brands in 2017. Um, I read um, a stat a couple of years ago that you're more likely to be struck li struck by lightning than you are to click on a banner ad. <laughs> so, with that in mind, brands it is it is shown that brands are spending a lot less on advertising and more on PR and mm -hmm. content marketing. Definitely. So, um, one example of how brands are doing this is obviously with the rise of influencers and bloggers and things like that and people like Joe Wicks are kind of taking over mm -hmm, the world. Definitely. Brands are actually copying their relaxed style on social media. So you go on Instagram stories and you look at what m and are doing mm -hmm. and Waitrose and they're doing these really relaxed kind of videos that are almost yeah. like what, what a blogger would, would actually create. So I think they're trying to mirror that. So yeah, I do think it's really important. So you think... If you don't have a plan, an influencer marketing plan set up to 2017, then you're losing the game, really. I think it depends on the brand that you are, because, I mean, if you're if you're a consumer brand, then yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say that if you're it's a B two B thing, it's as important. But okay. if if you're if you're selling a food product or a fashion item or something like that, you definitely need to be yeah, looking definitely. into it. Definitely. Okay. So the next trend I've identified is press releases. So do you think the press release is dead or do you think there's a better way to pitch to a journalist? I think I do not I do not for one minute think the press release is dead. I just think it's the way you pitch a press release and you okay. need to make sure you've got a strong story, a strong headline, a strong top line and crucially you need to have really good like what's called assets to go with it, so a really cool video or some great okay. images. Or like a bit of a feature hook that the journalist can like latch onto. Right. Okay. Um, but you can you can also pitch to journalists just with an email. You can just introduce a product and say, "Look, I've launched this product. Would you like to give it a go? Maybe you could try it across a week and then mm -hmm. write about it for a feature." So in that sense, you know, there are different ways to pitch to a journalist. But yeah. I kind of think that journalists, having been one for so many years, that's kind of what you expect to receive. Yeah, it's and I feel really like, like if, a backbone. Of PR, yeah, backbone. and I just feel like. If you were to receive a pitch by video, you'd be a bit like, what's going on? Mm. I think you'd find it a bit strange. So, yeah. yeah, I think because of how journalists operate, I actually think it's still really relevant. Yeah. Okay, good. The fourth trend I've identified is reputation management. So, Emma, do you think this is becoming more important with the rise of online reviews and websites such as TripAdvisor? Yeah, I definitely think that websites like TripAdvisor have had a massive impact. Um, everybody's more accountable now, like all brands are kind of mm. like exposed online, so yeah. you only have to do a quick Google search and, you know, 
Google News will reveal something negative about your brand or TripAdvisor will give you a bad rating. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, it's really important to respond to complaints really quickly. Yeah. And actually, that's where you start crossing over into that customer service um, element. I mean, you, you might release a crisis statement, obviously, if something yeah. really bad happens. So that's more of a PR arm. But if somebody takes to Twitter and starts abusing your brand or just mm. being really negative... Um, I think you need someone that's really skilled in writing and messaging and communicating to actually yeah. respond to those um, um, complaints yeah. um, in a really sort of um, tactical way to make sure that you're stopping it from becoming a crisis, <laughs> if that makes sense. Because obviously it's happening more and more each year, especially in 2017 now. Yeah. That's the first place people go if they want to complain about it. something. Yeah, that is exactly it. I think Twitter <laughs> especially is is probably yeah. the most powerful place for people to actually complain. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> the fifth trend is the growth of live video in 2017. So do you think that more brands will be using live video this year or would you use it within a campaign strategy yourself? Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, Facebook live video has been around a couple of months now and that's obviously completely taken off. And... Instagram has obviously got its live video function now as well, mm -hmm. So and loads of influencers uh, are using that. So going back to my influencer yeah. point, actually, brands need to be kind of going where the influencers are going, yeah. otherwise they'll miss out. But um, I'd, I'd definitely recommend it for a client, especially a consumer client, again, because, um, like, for example, a food brand that I work with, we recommended they do um, create their own mindfulness sessions. Um, related. It, it does relate to the brand. I won't go into who they are. <laughs> but... Um, because one thing that's really popular is um, we noticed is Facebook live videos hit training. People can tune in at 6 a.m. and actually um, do a live hit session. Okay. So we kind of thought if a brand could do like their own version of that, so like a live mindfulness session yeah, at lunchtime while you're eating your lunch or whatever, yeah. you know, you can actually find those little niches that are relevant to your brand for live video. Definitely. I think that's a really good idea. I might use that myself. <laughs> The final trend is PR and SEO. So do you think that there's a link between PR and SEO? And also, do you think that PR practitioners need to be more clued up about SEO? I definitely think that PR professionals need to learn more about SEO because of the rise of content marketing. Mm -hmm. So um, my first sort of job in PR was head of content, okay. having been a journalist. And my role was to work with brands and kind of improve their presence online so you can do that through blogs and through like your social media presence mm -hmm. and video and things like that but it does massively cross over into PR because what how you present present yourself online is a mirror image of what you should be doing in PR and yeah. they should be quite integrated so and if you have really strong messages and really great content um, online that a PR professionals cr created because mm -hmm. they're the ones that are best placed to do it that will actually boost your SEO on your website because right. the content you're publishing will be on that website and yeah. kind of helping your SEO. Okay. Um, and video, I should just mention, is one of the key things for boosting SEO as well because so many people are watching video nowadays online. So. Okay.